the peace and joy of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us offer this gift of God's peace to one another. In place, I invite you to express the Holy Spirit's greetings to one another. We continue. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help, help us. It, it is, is hard, hard to believe there is enough to share. We, we question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the man from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen.
And when he spoke to me, his spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of the maid to the hand of the ministers, so our eyes look to you, O Lord our God, until you show us your mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. from the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians, beginning in the second verse. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to a third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. What caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no more was permitted to repeat. <coughs> On behalf of such one, I will boast, but on my behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a message of Satan to torment me, I keep me to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. <clears throat> Whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Wherever you enter a house, 
stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, if they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Heavenly Father and Lord and Savior Jesus and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Now, generally, people need a balanced mix of things in our lives. I won't go on you know, listing a bunch of examples, but the one I wish to refer to, and bear with me this morning, and will lead into my focus is noise volume. We certainly need a quiet peace. God invites us, be still and know I am God. And sometimes God spoke in a quiet voice, but also as well as in loud, loud storms. Certainly after this during this past year of pandemic, I hope we took opportunity, in a sense, to be still and quiet, uh, since we were restricted in much of our mobility. But also, you know, we need that time. But also, of course, we need to get noisy, in a sense. As children, we needed to take naps, and at other times, we needed to make noise. Often that, of course, conflicted and upset parents who wanted quiet when we wanted noise. Also, around the holidays, we like to get louder with noise. Today, we celebrate our nation's birthday with, once again, loud fireworks. Not here inside the church, please. Another holiday for which we like to make noise is New Year's Eve. I mention that because a particular incident has stuck in my memory. I still remember when a cousin, Debbie, and I, as junior high age kids, were left home alone while our parents went out to make noise at the VFW Club on New Year's Eve. I am sure they had plenty of celebration drinks as well, which would make for a greater volume in the club. So anyway, here we were, left alone. It is New Year's Eve. Well, what do you do on New Year's Eve? Make noise. What if you have no fireworks, not even a party popper? Oh, I know what we could use, Debbie. Let's each get a couple of pots and pans and go outside in the front yard and bang them together and make noise. Well, as you can probably already imagine, when our moms and dads got home, we did not start off the new year on very good terms. <laughs> and a few dented up pots and pans had to be replaced. Well, we were scolded, to which I would not dare challenge to their face, of course, but internally I felt like saying back to them something along the lines now that comes to mind of, well, this woman you left me with and I, for which you gave us no noisemakers on New Year's Eve to celebrate with. Well, like Adam and Eve blaming God, I blame parents. Well, the point is that we need to express ourselves sometimes in making noise. God wants us 
to make noise. But I'm not talking about just plain old noise, of course. In our gospel lesson, we have Jesus teaching and astounding with wisdom and deeds of power. At the end of the gospel portion, the disciples, with minimal supplies, went out proclaiming that all should repent, casted out demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. They were causing a fuss. In a sense, they were making noise in the world. Of course, God working in the world, causing a noisy fuss, was not new, as we see back in the Old Testament uh, with Ezekiel, who preached to a rebellious house of Israel. Well, today, we in the Christian church body of Christ, yes, we quietly work in many ways. The food pantries, quilting, and many other ways. But if we speak up today, speak up for justice, as best as we understand justice, then be ready for some shouting in this world making noise against the church, or even scandalously within the church. As citizens of two kingdoms, we work for witnessing and living and applying God's kingdom into this earthly, worldly kingdom. And whether we are received well or not, like those disciples, we offer God's word of love and grace. We make, in a sense, noise in the world with our faithfulness. Now, again, bear with me as I kind of wander in my reflections today. There's another kind of noise making uh, that I'd like to refer to today, and that's because we here at Holy Cross are dedicating 75 new hymnals called All Creation Sings. Humans feel the need to make celebration noise at certain times. We also need to sing. I suspect even non-singers make and hear within themselves music. As the scripture verse invites us to make a joyful noise, we are creatures that need to sing one way or another. The Psalms, of course, were written to be sung. <clears throat> the Book of Solomon is often called the Song of Solomon. All human creatures can sing, and God's people are invited more so into song. Now, I know some of us have a hard time singing. Actually, I confess, I'm one of those. I still remember, though, I love music and singing. My daughter in high school, her last some, uh, year, she had way more than enough to graduate, and she was taking, of course, the advanced college, pre-college courses and so forth. She decided that, well, she'd been playing the uh, clarinet all through school, but in addition to that, instead of taking yet one more academic class, along with the two or three she already was signed up for, she informed her mom and I that she was going to take choir. She had never done that before. And so she was going to take choir. And I said, oh, great, that, that's fun. You know, I was in choir when I was in high school, which my daughter said, you were in high school in choir, Dad? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, music can be helpful to the human spirit under most any human situation. When we are hurt or fearful, we can even be led to sing. When we are searching for answers, Sometimes our hearts sing the questions and search. 
when our happiness and joy need to overflow, there is music that helps the heart. And we need to recognize God, that in God that there is music. And when we need to praise God, we need to be it from mournful to an ecstatic joy situation. It flows from our hearts and minds. Even secular society recognizes the human creature. I think of a title, I haven't read it, but the title certainly sticks with you. The popular poetic book by Maya Angelou is titled, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. Well, there's a scripture verse when the slaves, the captors of Israel, once asked the slaves to sing one of your songs of Jerusalem. Even in slavery, the human spirit sometimes has to sing. We are thankful that on every Sunday throughout the week, maybe we might be alone in the shower, whatever the situation may be, our hearts can sing. Sing our sadness, sing our searching, sing our joy. We're thankful to add to the repertoire. There's already thousands of hymns that I consider my favorites. And so I look forward to learning some more in our new hymn book. And, uh, well, when my voice crackles and so forth, I still will let the words sing in the heart and mind too. May we all join hearts today. Sing first and foremost, of our praise of God, but also our thanksgiving to God. Think in our hearts of music that praises God for our nation on this birthday of ours. A nation, yes, that is well, like Israel back then, sometimes rebellious and stubborn and you know off track to what it should be. But it is a blessed nation that we have been given a nation for which we can be thankful, as well as work within to make for greater change, for greater justice and peace in relationships within this nation and in this world. So dear friends, let us sing, sing praise to God and sing of God's works through our lives, through our songs, amen. I invite us to turn to the hymn again as printed in the bulletin for hymn number 1000 if you want to use a book in front of you. God's work, our hands.
way you're cooking, isn't it? When we profess our faith, use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He is ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of all, through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith, that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the heavens, your creating spirit animates the universe. We give you thanks for the moon and stars for the planets in the Milky Way galaxy, and for all of the mysteries of the cosmos that remain unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death and rescue us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery or corruption. Direct our freedom to the works of liberation and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, you become vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ. In solidarity with the disempowered, strengthen those who feel faint. Give courage to those who fear and bring wholeness to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for our outreach ministries, the food pantry here, and the, uh, many other projects that, that we do. Equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord of compassion, be with those who are in need of your healing power, that your spirit work the healing and wholeness. And when there is no outward uh, physical uh, healing, heal the heart. Give comfort and strength of your mercy and loving presence. Be with those that uh, we list. Fritzy, Susan, no, Susan, Jan, Charlie, Frank, Al, and Cindy, and others that you know, are not written in the bulletin, but others that are on our hearts. We lift you for a healing uh, process that we may eventually give you uh, prayers of thanksgiving. Uh, for your healing in many ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of all creation, you so loved the world that you gave your only Son. You gave us Christ that we may be one, rather than, and, and no Jew or Greek, male or female, and slave and free but one in your love and in your grace, one in glorifying you. Give, we give you special uh, thanks this particular morning for our nation. Give us guidance, continue your many blessings, but also strengthen us with your Holy Spirit. Guide us in ways of greater and greater mercy, compassion, 
justice, that we may be instruments uh, witnessing to your will, that is a greater wholeness for the world. Set us uh, straight when we need correction. Affirm us, Lord, when we are uh, going in a good way, reflecting your will and your ways. Thank you for our individual freedoms. And thank you for those who have been willing to sacrifice, to risk sacrifice. Those who have and those who are serving in military forces or in ways of first responders. Watch over and protect them, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks that in every time and place you call forth prophets who move us towards freedom. Thank you for those who work for human rights, community organizers, and all who strive for liberty for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. 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 We head into the offering time, and this is where I have placed our dedication of our new hymn books as an offering to God. His gift to us is that we may praise Him, praise Him in time of need or time of joy. And uh, so we acknowledge hymn books that are tools to help us in doing so. We continue with the litany of dedication. God is worshipped in different and creative ways, such as story, drama, and art. Singing has always been an important thread running through the fabric of the worship of God. We thank you, Lord God, for the long tradition of worshiping in song. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will praise the Lord with thanksgiving. We thank you, gracious God, that despite our human frailty, you have been faithful from the beginning. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. We thank you, Lord God, that in every generation, People have written songs for your worship. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord with all the earth. With all creation, O God, we sing your praise. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy. Thank you, gracious God, that your love is for each of us, that each may respond. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have you. We praise you, Lord God, for you call us into community with you. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for the Lord is gracious and a song of praise to sing. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, sovereign of all that is, worthy of all praise. We dedicate these hymn books to your praise and worship. May our singing bring glory to your name, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue with the offertory.
God that you have refreshed us through the healing power of the gift of life. And I've got the wrong prayer. We'll continue uh, with the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you.
body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you.
to rise and come to the able. The holy and precious body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Pray, we give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just to refresh your memory, this is that uh, closing hymn that we practiced before the service this morning. And it starts out like this. Let us enter into the song of thanksgiving and freedom. And that's the kind of beat. I'm sorry.